Today is the 13th of March 2023. My name is David Hickson and in today's market update we're going to be taking a look at the S&P 500 or SPX and the Nasdaq or NDX and gold. Before we do that I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. Let's start with the discussion of the SPX or S&P 500 and this is the analysis that we were looking at last week of course and as you probably know by now we are tracking two analyses in the S&P 500 or in fact in the US markets altogether. The one possibility is that the trough that you can see phased here as a 20 week cycle trough in the middle of October last year is indeed only a trough of 20 week magnitude which means that the market is is now coming down into a trough of greater magnitude, possibly even a trough of 18 month magnitude. However, there are some anomalies with that analysis, in particular the fact that we have seen a fairly bullish shape elapse as the market has formed the 20-week cycle that has followed that mid-October trough. And that leads us to the other analysis we have been considering, which is that the greater magnitude cycle trough actually formed in October of last year. Recently, that analysis seems to have become the more likely one. However, in recent market updates, I have been hiding the cycles or the cycle markers of all cycles longer than the 20-week cycle. And the reason that I do that is that it enables us to focus our attention on a cycle in which we have a certain degree of confidence. In this case, it is, of course, the 20-week cycle. So I believe that the trough that formed in October of last year was of at least 20 week magnitude so I don't have very much question around that which means that the trough that we're coming into now must also of course be of at least 20 week magnitude. Now I've drawn a fairly centered nest of lows over here that is that triangle standing on its head where the next cycle troughs of all cycles from the 20 week cycle and shorter are expected to form but to present the nest of lows as it is shown on this chart chart you can see that it is indeed actually more like that in other words it is leaning over to the left that indicates that the 20 week cycle trough is overdue and of course in recent market updates we've been looking at the fact that this 20 week cycle trough is due now in last week's market update the title of the update was right on cue because indeed right at the time that we were expecting a 20 week cycle trough to form a trough did form but I hope that you watched the video last week instead of simply reading the headline because the message in last week's video was that we needed to be very cautious and we needed to get confirmation that the trough had formed before making any trading decisions on the basis that a trough had formed even though it was right on cue. That proved with the benefit of hindsight to be very sensible advice and if we zoom in we can see exactly what happened. As mentioned in last week's market update price came up to the 20 day FL and crossed that FLD at the high of the bar on Friday. That is always a worrying sign. It's important to remember that these cycles that influence the markets we are trading unfold in real time. And when markets touch an FLD or touch or cross a VTL, it's important to bear in mind at what time that is happening. When that happens towards the end of trading on a Friday, it is certainly time to sit up and pay attention because it is a bit of a danger sign. I discussed this in last week's market update. If you didn't see it, I would encourage you to go back and take a look. As mentioned in last week's market update, when price crosses over an FLD, particularly when it does late on a Friday, we watch with great attention as it comes down and meets that FLD again, which it did, of course, on Tuesday. It seemed for a period of time to be finding support, but then, of course, on Thursday, it dropped down below that FLD and dropped to a lower price, indicating that this trough over here was probably not the expected trough of the 20 week cycle. And so we were expecting a 20 week cycle trough to form and we are still expecting a 20 week cycle trough to form because of course price has dropped down below the low that formed 10 days ago. I also showed the 40 day FLD in last week's video and pointed out that price had not yet crossed above the 40 day FLD. Of course if a 20 week cycle trough had formed we would expect price to cross above the 40 day FLD because when price crosses above a 40 day FLD it 
certain firms that a trough of at least 40-day magnitude has formed in the market. When a trough of greater magnitude has formed, we expect price to cross clearly through that FLD. I suggested last week that we should be watching the 40-day FLD, and it was just as well that we did, because as you can see, price significantly failed to cross above that FLD. Let's quickly zoom out and take a look at the 40-day FLD in a bigger context. You know that I like to trade a sequence of interactions between price and the FLD, and following a trough of at least 20-week magnitude, we have the same sequence of interactions that play out between price and the 40-day FLD. The first interaction is, of course, the A category interaction, where price crosses up above the 40-day FLD. Then the next interaction is where the 40-day cycle trough forms. We expect price to find support at about the level of the 40-day FLD. You can see the price came down towards the 40-day FLD but remained above it, didn't even reach down to it. However, it did a double BC category interaction. I should point out these are labeled BC category interactions. B for the price move down towards the FLD and C as price bounces up away from the FLD. We do often see a double BC category interaction. The first BC interaction will usually occur at around about the time of the trough of the cycle one degree shorter than the cycle upon which the FLD is based. And that is exactly what happened here with price interactions with the 40-day FLD. The next interaction was, of course, where price crossed down below the FLD, and that is a D category interaction on its way down to the 80-day cycle trough. We then have an E category interaction where price crosses back up above the level of the 40-day FLD, I should point out the fact that price so easily achieved the target generated by crossing above the 40-day FLD and then far exceeded it alerted us to the fact that there was a great deal of bullishness in the market, which brings us back to the discussion of the magnitude of the cycle trough in October. The next interaction was the F category interaction. And then last week, we witnessed an almost perfect G and H category interaction. This is also a double interaction. The G category interaction is where price comes up towards the FLD and finds resistance at the level of that FLD. The H category interaction is simply when price Price pulls away to the downside on its way down to the 20-week cycle trough. And so is it possible that the 20-week cycle trough is going to form now? Yes, it is possible. There have been 151 bars since the trough in the middle of October. The average length of a 20-week cycle is 136 bars. And so as of today, we are about two weeks overdue on that 20-week cycle trough. You will also notice that there have been 81 days or 81 bars since the 80-day cycle trough that formed in the third week of December, just before Christmas. Again, that is a slightly long 80-day cycle. One of the reasons why this might have happened has to do with the fact that there have been news events that have been affecting these markets. You will, of course, have heard about the Silicon Valley Bank news, and that is certainly causing some volatility in the markets. But we are going to continue to be on high alert for the fact that the 20-week cycle trough is expected to form in this market. It has been some time since we've taken a look at the NASDAQ or the NDX in these market update videos and the reason for that is because the NASDAQ moves very much in sync with the S&P 500 and there often isn't really very much to say about it that hasn't already been said in the discussion of the S&P 500. You can see here we have exactly the same situation with the important trough forming in the middle of October. Again, at least a 20-week cycle trough, possibly a trough of even greater magnitude. We had the 80-day cycle trough, you can see, which formed, interestingly, about a week later in the NASDAQ. It is also possible that that 80-day cycle trough should actually be considered to have formed over here in the first few days of January. The interesting thing about this analysis is that we have a more balanced picture. You can see that there have been 75 days since the 80-day cycle trough formed in the final days of December. And of course, we have the same 151 days that have elapsed since the trough in the middle of October. 
you can see there is a greater balance between those two numbers because of course double 75 is 150 and so if the 20 week cycle trough that we are expecting and there is the nest of lows at the foot of the chart was to have occurred on Friday or occurs very soon then we would have a more balanced picture in terms of the 80 day cycle. The interesting thing to note in the Nasdaq is that again we have a fairly bullish picture emerging. Here is the M shape for the first 80 day cycle that elapsed from October to December and here is the M shape for the next 80 day cycle which although at first glance seems to be a good deal more bullish than the first one is actually providing us with a fairly mixed message because of the fact that it experienced this early peak. In other words the peak in the current 80 day cycle occurred early which has some fairly bearish implications. In the Nasdaq as well we are looking for price to come down into this 80 day cycle trough. You can see that the nest of lows is a little neater in the Nasdaq than it was in the S&P 500 and that has to do with the fact that recently the cycles have been a little more regular. Again we have the same sequence of interactions between price and the 40 day cycle FLD. In particular of course we experienced our F category interaction where price crossed down below the 40 day FLD and importantly last week price found resistance at the level of the 40 day FLD that was our G category interaction with the H category interaction as price moved down and away from the FLD towards this 20 week cycle trough. So in the Nasdaq 2 we are looking for the 20 week cycle trough to form. It is certainly due now and could occur at any time. Finally a quick update on gold. I'm not going to repeat everything. If you haven't been keeping up to date with our analysis of gold I would encourage you to go back and take a look at previous market update videos which included gold. You will know that I have been tracking both a peak analysis which indicates that a 40 week cycle peak formed over here in early February and also a trough analysis where we were expecting the 20 week cycle trough which you can see has now been positioned in this analysis as having occurred right at the end of February. I am displaying two FLDs which I've discussed in the past two market updates as well. The one FLD is based upon a trough analysis and the other FLD is based upon a peak analysis. They are very close together because of the fact that the average wavelengths of those cycles are not very different. The interesting thing about gold compared to the US markets is that the expected 20 week cycle trough which we were looking forward to in all of these markets seems to have formed in gold. These diamonds that have been positioned at the foot of the chart are hollow as you can see they are not filled in. In other words that is not absolutely confirmed as a trough of the 20 week cycle in the analysis but it is a very likely position for the 20 week cycle trough to have formed. Price then crossed above the 20 day FLD generating a target as a matter of interest up to 1880. Now that target you can see has in fact been reached today. The important thing to note about gold as mentioned in last week's market update is the fact that we are expecting a 40 day cycle peak to form about now. You can see that 39 days have elapsed. The average length of a 40 day cycle is 34 days. And if you take a look at the top right hand edge of the chart you can see that in the peak analysis the recent average wavelength of the 40 day cycle has been 43.6 days. And that is why the blue circle for the 40 day cycle peak is a little off to the right occurring later this week. The important thing of course is that we are expecting a 40 day cycle peak to form and price has achieved the target that was generated as a result of price crossing above the 20 day FLD. After the 40 day cycle peak forms we would expect price to drop down again. What would we expect to happen if this is the 20 week cycle trough? We would of course expect price to find support at the level of the 20 day FLD. Let me clear these markers and show you what is happening in terms of the trough analysis and interactions between price and the 20 day FLD. First of all following a trough of 20 week magnitude we would get an A category interaction in terms of the trough analysis. Interestingly price found support at the level of the 20 day FLD last week. That would be labeled an initial BC category interaction. 
leading us to expect the possibility of a double BC category interaction because the true BC category interaction, if you like, occurs at about the time that the first 20-day cycle trough forms in the market. And so we would expect price to drop out of the 40-day cycle peak, find support again at the level of the 20-day FLD before bouncing up again. As a matter of interest, this expectation of what the market is going to do can be illustrated by means of the composite model line. Here is a composite model line produced by the results of both the trough and the peak analysis, and I have combined cycles all the way from 10 days upwards in producing this composite model line. You can see the composite model line is expecting this 40-day cycle peak. It is in fact expecting it around about now. It is then expecting price to come back down and at about the time that the 20-day cycle trough forms in the market, we should find the market finding some support. Then it is going to bounce out of that 20-day cycle trough and then of course it will come down into the 40-day cycle trough which is expected in about the first week of April. Tracking both a trough and a peak analysis in gold is something that I find very useful. Let's consider quickly the interactions between price and the 20-day FLD based on the peak analysis. Following this peak of 40-week magnitude we had an A category interaction as price crossed down below the 20-day FLD. At about the time of the 20-day cycle peak, we would have expected price to find resistance in the B and then C category interactions. Then, of course, price crossed up above the FLD in a D category interaction as price came up towards the 40-day cycle peak. The next interaction is, of course, going to be an E category interaction where price is expected to cross down below the FLD on its way down to the second trough that forms in the W shape produced by a peak analysis. If I display that composite model line, I think you can see how the combination of both the peak analysis and the trough analysis provide us with an extra layer of information because here is price moving down out of the 40-day cycle peak but then it is going to bounce out of a 20-day cycle trough where it is likely to find support at the level of the FLD but then it must cross down below the FLD as indicated here I've labeled that the E category interaction on the basis of the peak analysis. I do hope that the combination of a peak analysis and a trough analysis hasn't been too confusing. I find it a fascinating way to approach an instrument such as gold. It works very well with gold. It doesn't work quite so well with stock markets, but it does, interestingly, also work very well with crypto markets. And so that is something that we will be looking at soon in a market update. I do hope that you found this market update useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please join us on our Hearst Cycles Discord server or put them in the comments below this video. I look forward to hearing from you.